President Vladimir Putin of Russia to further strengthen relations and security, trade and investment, and build partnership that will enhance Niger's huge gas potential for Russia's remarkable success in gas exploration. The summit is expected to bring fresh perspectives on some global issues and challenges, including nuclear technology, energy development, agriculture, infrastructure and development strategies. An African Business Forum, which will bring together African and Russian business leaders, will be held during the event to enhance Russian investments in Africa and promote African business interest in the host country. Now to the media. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed has assured that no amount of attacks sponsored or otherwise will stop the implementation of the approved presidential recommendations to inject sanity into the nation's broadcast industry. The minister made this, gave this assurance in Lagos at an interactive session with members of online publishers and Forson reports. As I speak, plans are ongoing to launch more coordinated attacks with a view to truncating the implementation of the approved recommendations. Let me be straight. No amount of attacks, sponsored or otherwise, will stop the implementation of the approved recommendations. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed explaining the reason behind the federal government's desire to engage sanity into the nation's broadcast space. The minister said since the inauguration of the Seven-Man Committee saddled with the responsibility of implementing the presidential recommendation which will ensure the independence of the National Broadcasting Commission, review the commission's code to reflect the upward review of sanctions against broadcast outfits that breach the code. He maintained that it is in the interest of the corporate existence of the country. Only non-patriots and anarchists will kick against measures aimed at putting an end to fake news and hate speech, especially in our broadcast industry. All those who are guilty should be afraid of the efforts to sanitize the broadcast industry. Respons responsible broadcasters have nothing to fear. This is not a move to stifle free speech or gag any but purveyors of fake news and hate speech should not expect to sleep easy. On the need to dismantle monopoly in the industry, Lai Mohammed said it is to create a level playing field for creativity. He enjoined members of the Online Publishers League to remain in vanguard on efforts to tackle fake news and hate speech. In Lagos, Anthony Foxen, NTA News. Now to communications, the attention of the Federal Ministry of Communications has been drawn to the viral text message allegedly sent by the mobile network operator MTN Nigeria and other mobile operators notifying subscribers of a four naira charge per 20 seconds on USSD access to banking services from the 21st of October 2019. A release from the Office of the Minister of Communications says the Minister is unaware of this development and has directed the sector regulator, the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC, to ensure that your president suspends such plans until the minister is fully and properly briefed. Now to security. Troops of one division have rescued four kidnapped students from bandits at Gurumi village in Chikun local government area of Kaduna state. A statement by the Nigerian Army Operations Media Coordinator Colonel Aminu Ilyasu also indicates that seven Boko Haram members tried to escape troops on slot were killed when the vehicle stepped on an improvised explosive device, IED, in Lamba, a forest in Borno state. The IED was laid by the terrorists. Similarly, Chops and Rivers State raided a suspected sea pirates camp at Tingibibi Ogubol local government area and recovered one AK-47 rifle and three pirate rockets. Now let's talk animal activities. The management of the Kano Zoological Garden says the lion that escaped has been captured and returned to its cage. Head, head of the Zoological Garden said the lion was shot with an injection which made him powerless before it was captured and returned to its cage. To other matters now, over 10 shops in Santana Market, one of the major markets in Benin, have been raised by fire. I want to 
reports that one person allegedly died while trying to salvage some assets at the inferno raged. As at the time NTA news crew arrived at the scene, the fire had breathed for several hours. Food items, clothes, generator sets, non-perishable goods had all been reduced to ashes, leaving the victims with no hope of recovering any item from their shops. All my material, what I'm supposed to use, take everything on. All money when I borrow, don't go. Since we lose when I carry credit, I would think pay and I don't know, I don't know. A few shops were still left standing, but the overall picture was one of infernal devastation. Victims have different views to what sparked the fire. They also claimed that even though a door state fire service was contacted, response was not quick enough. Go in the hospital at now. Nobody come. The rest of uh, the fire service, no one, they don't, they don't respond. A visit to the state fire service revealed that the officers who were on duty were not available for comments. <laughs> in Benin, only Oklo and in news. Away from the inferno, 28 years after the creation of Yobe State, Dabu showed the state capital set to have an ultra modern market as Governor made Malabon and laid the foundation stone for the construction of the infrastructure at a cost more than 2.8 billion naira. UNICEF Sulaima reports that this is part of government's resolve to provide a standard economic environment for the growth and development of the state. As Governor May Malabuni laid the foundation stone for the construction of an ultra-modern market in Dematru, the state capital, residents trooped out to witness the epoch-making event as this is happening 28 years after the creation of Yobe State and 43 years of Dematru and local government headquarters. The governor noted that the market to be constructed at the cost of more than 2.8 billion naira has to a month completion period and will accommodate 600 open and lock shops, administrative building, police outposts, road and drainages among other facilities. For the dilapidated and inadequate structures in the market and the urgent need to boost economic growth, we thought it is necessary for us to intervene at the third level. And this is exactly what we are doing right now. Apart from the one in Dematru, Governor Buni said, it is the result of his administration to construct modern markets in six major towns across the state to provide appropriate economic environment Buyers and sailors in the matter, Mr. Suleiman, NTA News. The National Human Rights Commission has expressed serious concern over the proliferation of illegal detention centers across the country, saying that such centers must be closed to save their victims from further torture, inhumane and degrading treatments. In a statement signed by the Director of Corporate Affairs and External Linkages, Lambert Okwara says the Executive Secretary of the Commission, Tony Ojibo, stated this in Abuja while reacting to the discovery of some illegal detention centers in some parts of the country. He further said the act of torture in all forms of inhumane and degrading treatment under whatsoever guise are clearly illegal, constitute human rights violations of the 1999 Constitution of the P of the FRN as amended as well as the Convention Against Torture and other international treaties to which Nigeria is a signatory. Meanwhile, the Executive Secretary directed the Commission of State Coordinators in the North West to carry out in-depth investigations into the alleged illegal detention centres, including the case of the abducted children in Kano, and along with the Commission's mandate. The Executive Secretary also called on the Nigerian Police, Nigerian Security and Civil Defence Corps, as well as other relevant law enforcement agencies operating at the federal and state government levels to be more vigilant and fish out the perpetrators of these heinous crimes and ensure that they are diligently prosecuted in accordance with the law. Now to entertainment, the federal government has pledged its full support for the successful hosting of the 2019 All African Music Awards, AFRIMA, as the country prepares to host the glamorous event in Lagos come November with the theme, Feel Africa. Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, made the pledge in a statement signed by Special Assistant Shegun Ayemi in Lagos. The minister said AFRIMA is one of the biggest awards for the music industry in Africa, and what government has done in the past is to provide the enabling environment for the awards to take place by providing support services and 
working. It is on record that the AFRIMA editions have been hosted by Nigeria among the most successful. Therefore, this year again, the federal government is ready to partner with AFRIMA professionally by giving them the maximum support, such as effective media coverage, and also help them in reaching out to other critical stakeholders. The Minister added that part of the reasons why Nigeria has successfully hosted the Music Awards is because the country has relaxed its visa regime with visa on arrival policy. AFRIMA, which was first held in 2014, was established in collaboration with the African Union to reward and celebrate musical talents and creativity in Africa, as well as to promote African cultural heritage. Now let's talk standards and compliance. The Seahorse Lubricant Industries Limited manufacturers and distributors of Seahorse Lubricating Oil in Nigeria have received the Standards Organization of Nigeria's Mancap Certificate for producing synthetic lubricants that meet the relevant Nigerian industrial standard. Joy Ilwego reports that the ceremony took place in Oka, Anambra State. The Mandatory Conformity Assessment Program, MANCAP, is a mandatory product certification scheme put in place by the Standard Organization of Nigeria, SON, to ensure that all locally manufactured products in the country conform to standards before such products are presented for sale in the market or exported. Director General, Standard Organization of Nigeria, Osita Abaloma, represented by the State Coordinator, Williams Okwe, while making the presentation, reiterated the SON's efforts to promote quality of products manufactured in the country and urged Seahorse Lubricants Industries Limited to ensure strict adherence to requirements and consistency of production as defined by the terms of the certificate. My assurance that any product you see this mancap logo, just rest assured that thorough inspection, thorough analysis of their products have been carried out. The products which we are certified include the Seahorse 0 W20, Seahorse 5W20, and Seahorse 5W10 synthetic oil. I am here in the factory ensuring that quality is adhered to. So Seahorse synthetic oil, when we say full synthetic oil, it is full synthetic. It is 100 synthetic. Go for this and you are sure of what you have invested your money in. You will never regret it. I used to change my oil every other month, but since I started using CO3 recant, the change interval increased to three months interval. CHOS is as the same as the other foreign product that we're using. And not only that, it's also affordable. CHOS Lubricant Industries Limited is a manufacturing company that produces lubricating oil for internal combustion engines and mechanical transmission systems. The company's success is said to have been largely as a result of its effective implementation of quality management system in Oka, Joy, Ilwebu, NTA News. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, said it will continue to deliver across the value chain of the oil and gas sector for the benefit of Nigerians. Released by the acting group general manager, Group Public Affairs Division of the NNPC, Samson Makoji says the NNPC leads in the delivery of corporate social responsibility initiatives, particularly to host communities. The NNPC MD Melikiari was at uh, the 2019 NNPC Downstream Golf Tournament in Kaduna and described the event as beneficial to the health of more than 2,000 employees of the NNPC and other residents of Kaduna State alone. NPC is an enabling organization. Our activities touch the lives of Nigerians in very many ways, in very many positive ways. Uh, one of them is support for the community and also support for our staff. Kaduna Refinery is one of the flagship facilities of the NNPC. Now to the non-oil sector, the clamor by the present administration towards diversifying the economy for sustainable economic growth through the non-oil sector can never be overemphasized, as well as means are put in place to achieve that. The latest being a book launch on export promotion in Nigeria as it relates to laws and policies. Ossidi Ibo tells us more. The role of exports as fundamental source of foreign exchange, which has become more paramount for diversifying the Nigerian economy, is the reason for this gathering. The launch and public presentation of the book, Export Promotion in Nigeria, Law, Policy and Practice, X-rays the non-oil export trade under legal, institutional and policy frameworks, as well as international trade conventions. The time has come for Nigeria to join other developed countries of the world by embarking 
on an aggressive non-oil export drive. The author reminded us of an attempt made by successful government to address the problems of our dependence on oil. This is now my opportunity to ask everybody that is here to help me in unveiling uh, this, uh, this book. So, This book is going to really improve uh, all Nigerians who are in that business. My objective is that the subject of export promotion will be introduced in our various stationary institutions. Because if we are serious about export promotion, if we are serious about non-oil export trade, by now the subject should have been taught in our universities. The presentation of the 427-page book was viewed by many as another deliberate effort to bring to limelight fortunes associated with exports. In Abuja, Boss Sede Abu, NC News. Now to health, the need to use organic foods in Kerbin Islands has again been stressed by food and nutrient expert Dr. Carl Valley. Dr. Alistair, this at a health talk on healthy living through healthy food habits held at the Madubela University, Zaria. Sagid Mohammed, our reports. Nigeria has been blessed with fertile land that grows cereal crops in large quantity, along with its millets. Crop, according to expert, has a very rich content in lowering rates of fat absorption and reducing the risk of heart disease. An agricultural scientist and food expert. Dr. Kader Valley advocated for the intake and increased awareness regarding the health talk profile of millets. We need to get back to these millets. And among the five millets, we can actually almost mitigate all the diseases of the human race. The convener of the health talk, Baskar Raoul, general manager was African Sudamic, said the program was organized as part of their corporate social responsibility as well as to create an avenue for Nigerians to learn from the vast knowledge of the resource person. This is the best university. They can start this one to multiply. This is only we are giving the seed now. This is like a seed we are putting. Then multiply seed with the uh, ABU Jaria can do that one. I know that one. Other speakers at the health talk described the topic as apt. Many diseases are related to food these days. Therefore, the presentation we have had is very useful. So we we'll make sure that uh, this seed is now distributed to them, then group planting, and then we we'll continue to, to educate them about this uh, healthy living. Somebody who had a lucrative job in the United States of America, but he came back home to India. So India is, is enough for you. You have more job to do here. A similar health talk is expected to be organized in other universities across the country. In Zaria, I'm Sagir Mohammed Awal, NTA News. Away from health, His Royal Highness Apollo Cho is the paramount ruler of Okur LMA in Rivers State and reputed for his detribalized nature. For his effort at promoting peaceful coexistence and national unity, members of his constituency and other traditional rulers honored him with an award, describing his personal drive at national orientation as commendable and worthy of emulation. Chimdima Undubisi tells us more. As a monarch, His Royal Highness Apollo Chu travels across kingdoms and emirates in the country as a bridge builder, leading the campaign on peace, unity, cultural interaction, integration, and religious tolerance. These acts by the Egbere Merokuri and Ona Eta Ogale Eleme in Rivers State have not gone unnoticed as governing council of the National Development State of Traditional Rulers. At its 11th summit in Abuja, Stored on him the bastion of traditional leadership award, urging others to follow his footsteps. Nigeria's vice president was also given an award at the occasion. The Minister of Niger Delta Affairs received it on his behalf. As a concerned royal fathers and opinion leaders in our various kingdoms and communities, we have to consider adopting a strategy of intensifying campaign for behavioral change. We have to teach our people
to understand what cultural diversity is, you are central to any hopes of peace and stability. And the bridging of some of our nation's deepest social cleavages. King Apollos too has a message for his counterparts. When there is border behavior in the society, I tell you, the society will become an order. And when people do not do this anyhow, it attracts development into our community. You allow receiving crisis in your own domain. Just know that you are promoting development to your next neighbor. Because the people will reallocate from your own community to the next neighbor's community that is peaceful. Some of his colleagues say the award serves as an inspiration for them. Chim de Martin BC, NTA News. And the president of the Senate, Hamid Lawan, heartily felicitated with former head of state, General Yakubu Gowan, retired on the occasion of his 85th birthday. A statement by his special advisor on media and publicity, Ola Awoni, Senator Lawan thanked Almighty God for the grace of health, longevity and unblemished integrity that is evident in the general's exemplary life. He recalled that General Gowan assumed the leadership of Nigeria as a youth and at a time the country was at the age of disintegration. He explained that it was a very difficult circumstance as General Gowan rallied his troops and indeed all Nigerians to defend and preserve the unity and territorial integrity of their country. He did this through his inspirational call of Go On with One Nigeria. He noted that even after exiting power, General Gowan has been unwavering in promoting the unity, peace and prosperity of the country he loved so much. And out to sports, Manchester United and Liverpool ended 1-1 draw in an English Premier League match this Saturday Sunday. For more on sports but away from EPL, here is Amanda Marcus with details. Eight countries have qualified to the Championship of African Nations played in Cameroon next year, but venues and dates are yet to be announced. At the conclusion of their second leg matches in the last huddle to Cameroon, holders Morocco, Namibia, Rwanda, Tanzania, Uganda, Zambia, Togo, and the hosts Cameroon are true. Eight more countries are still expected to qualify in the 16-nation biennial tournament, and Nigeria's team B Super Eagles are out, having lost 3-4 on aggregate Togo. Despite Sikiro Alimi's two goals against Togo at the Agege Stadium in Lagos on Saturday, it was not enough as Nigeria needed a 3-0 scoreline, having lost 